Hi guys and welcome to another episode of the Wingfall Experience podcast. Today I have Kyriakos Giacomaros. I hope I pronounced that right. In the episode I was allowed to call him Kakos, which made my life a lot easier. He's a windsurf instructor and he's not only Greek and cool, but he's also now as a windsurf instructor transitioning into wing falling. He's taking us with him on his journey on how he learned wing falling. I think that is super cool because as an instructor, he already knows how to explain stuff. And as a beginner, he is kind of going for it with a fresh mindset and maybe he has a different angle on wing falling because he is such a good windsurfer. Check him out, enjoy this episode. Welcome to a new episode from the Wingfall Experience Podcast. Hey, man, how are you? Hello, Daniel. I'm fine. How are you? <laughs> so you told me actually in advance that um, I may call you Kakos. Kakos, uh, yeah, that is uh, the short version of my name uh, in Greek. It's much easier than my full name, I think, for most yeah. nationalities. And that's really, really nice because I have kind of a history in mis pronouncing names in the podcast <laughs> i so, saw one of your podcasts i think with one uh, with someone you were like mispronouncing the first 10 minutes so yeah yeah and i mean i i'm really i i really feel for people where mis mispronounce the name because i think it's really like rude and and you shouldn't do that at all but it was not on purpose at all you know I, yeah so it was <laughs> Uh, Dutch names and I was not able to pronounce it properly I guess because we are not used to the to the yeah, syllab yeah. syllabus or, or whatever it is you know and so I was kind of scared when I saw your full name <laughs> well you don't have to worry about mispronouncing mine you know I, I basically I work in like tourism so most of the people that first time hear my name even after like a two-week holiday they're probably mispronouncing it by the end but really I don't mind. As long as they know they're calling me, I'm fine, you know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I just go with Kakos today. Kakos, perfect. Perfect. Um, so if someone is, yeah, not familiar with you, um, introduce yourself. Like, what are you doing? Well, my name is Kyriakos, or like you said, Kakos, right? Uh, I am from Rhodes, Greece. Um, and, well, you know, I, if anybody knows Rhodes, they know it's a windy island. It's a fantastic island in the summer for, like, windsurfing. And my family basically owns multiple uh, stations, like windsurf station, kite surf stations. We're bringing in wing foiling now uh, and all the good stuff that you like to do on the water. Uh, but, you know, Rhodes Island is kind of active in the summer more, whether we like mm -hmm. it or not. So we are fully summer kind of destination. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, basically, I was born on a windsurf station. You know, I was born and raised on one. I've lived in the sea my whole <laughs> life. I think my mother told me I was swimming before I was walking. So... Uh, that kind of style you know just been in the sea my whole life that's awesome and that that's basically the dream you know like i i grew up like far <laughs> away from the ocean and when i was a little boy i was always thinking about like it would be so cool if i could just surf in front of my house and stuff like that and i was kind of like always you know oh my god why am i born landlocked <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's cool it's cool i mean everything has the positives and negatives of course but I, I can't really imagine living somewhere far, far, far from the sea. You know, mm -hmm. I, I'd, need, I'd need to be at least so with something in the water, at least a river, mm -hmm. a lake or whatever. But uh, it's hard imagining, like, if you told me, okay, you have to re live the rest of your life away from the sea. I'd be yeah. nah, not, not uh, it wouldn't even kind of stick in my head, you know? Yeah, I mean, um, so I'm, I'm based in Mainz nearby Frankfurt at River Rhine, which is the biggest river in Germany. And... Um, I can totally relate because I moved uh, once I moved to another city and I didn't feel at home for like two or three years, you know, and I couldn't figure out why. And, and that was exactly the case was like, there's no river. There was not a big lake or something. So it doesn't have to be the ocean. doesn't have to be the sea, but at least some kind of water. Uh, it just really helps to, for me to feel home, you know, and, and yeah, happy. Yeah. I know what you mean. I know what you mean. I was in, um, When I went to university, like I told you previously, I was in England mm -hmm. uh, and it was in, in Cambridge. So that's not like 
a sea next to you. You have to travel three hours to get to any good windsurf spots. Of course, I was like optimistic. So I had my uh, harness with me, never mm -hmm. touched it the whole time there. <laughs> uh, but I was looking for a sport to get into in university and I couldn't enjoy any sports. Like, okay, I'm not good at like football and basketball and all that anyway, but I was trying a lot of different stuff on land and nothing. And then I just got into rowing mm -hmm. because we were on the river the whole time. So I was like, okay, yeah, I can live with this. You know, I just, mm -hmm. as long as I'm on the water, it feels good. <laughs> Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah? It gives you, I don't know why, but for me, it's also some kind of peacefulness, so to yeah. say, you know, yeah. calmness. And probably, I, I mean, I, I don't want to make it too spiritual, but it's, for me, it's also like kind of in everyday's life, you know, you're always with your phone now and, and connected and on the water. I mean, at least in my spots, you know, people don't bring their phones yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Some bring their smartwatches already, but you're kind of disconnected and you're just yeah. where you're at. You connect with the sea and that's about it. You know, yeah. you're just like, yeah. you're there. You feel the sea, you're there. Even, I mean, it's like you said, it's a meditation, a Zen thing. And it's funny to say that, especially if you do any kind of wave sailing, mm -hmm. a lot of people will maybe come down to watch the windsurfers. Like a few days ago here, we had a big wavy day and I'm talking... Uh, big waves crashing you know and they say how can you even go in the water you know but for us even in that kind of mess it's just mm -hmm. zen it's you come mm -hmm. out and you're like relaxed everything is cleansed so. mm -hmm. i think that's it it's the connection with the water is uh, hard mm -hmm. to break off especially if you already have it yeah i i remember vividly a session this summer from uh, a spot close to klitmuller i don't know if you know klitmuller uh, they they call it cold hawaii Cold Hawaii, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, uh, it looks like a nice place. Too cold for me, but it looks like really good conditions. <laughs> yeah, you know, I actually I embrace that it's cold because otherwise it would be totally crowded. <laughs> <It's> true. <laughs> <laughs> so that helps, you know. And um, we had a great, great session um, with. Uh, I was on my wave kite gear, and w it was also pretty big and kind of scary. And this mix of alertness and flow state. I think it's just the best. And we were out for, I don't know, like three hours straight. And I came from the water, you know, like in these conditions, you're really like pumping and then sweating. And and I was like, oh my God, this is the best day I had for, I don't know, months, you know? Like, you, can, you can't find that combination in many other sports. It's really rare to, to kind of get the combination, like you said, of the flow, but at the same time, the alertness, the adrenaline mm -hmm. and the relaxation together, you know? It's, mm -hmm. uh, it's a super cool thing. So you are like coming back to you you are a, a super dedicated passionate windsurfer right basically yeah yeah windsurfing is my passion i, I know how to kite but yeah. i don't really do it much i know how to surf uh, we don't have the opportunity for that but also i don't do it much like if there's a uh -huh. chance to windsurf i'm going to be windsurfing okay surfer, yeah but but you're also a surfer i know how to surf and i know how yeah. to kite surf uh, yeah. probably better at kite surfing than i am at surfing mm -hmm. Uh, I picked up surfing quite easily because I do do uh, wave sailing in windsurfing. Like mm -hmm. I can, I go out on big waves. So it's kind of the same feeling, but without a sail, obviously. Mm -hmm. But for me, the annoying thing on surfing, unless you got some magical spot is the, I don't know, half an hour paddling out 30 <laughs> seconds, right? <laughs> I'm like, Oh Jesus. Like, is this half an hour worth it? Like while you're riding, you're like, yeah, it's worth it. And then when you finish, you're like, shit, I got to go all the way back there again. Okay. With windsurfing, you know, Even when you're not riding and you're going the other way, you're still in full blast. You're still in power. Same with kite surfing, I guess. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I think kite surfing, I also kind of enjoy. I just need to practice it more. And I, I don't get the chance that much because, yeah. uh, because of work and how things are here. I mean, like sticking with surfing for a sec, I, 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 I've, I mean, I'm probably like worse than you are. I don't know, but just what you're telling me, like, because I'm already pumped, like if I just have a, A, a decent ride in a in a in a in a wave you know that is a, i don't even have to do a turn and i'm pretty happy yeah. already <laughs> stoked about it um but what i really like about surfing uh, is and when we're talking about zen you know and kind of this meditation state like that you can sit in the lineup yeah so uh, you have this you know like paddling out and it's sometimes depending on the spot or the, the swell that's coming in the pain in the ass and then you are outside And you sit in the lineup and you're just watching the horizon because you don't want to miss a wave. And so that's also something where key. Like especially if you've got a lot of people there, it's like a little meeting out there, you know? Yeah. And yeah. everybody has a mutual understanding. Everybody's there for the same reason. And uh -huh. you're just waiting. Yeah. I know, yeah. I know what you mean. Yeah. 
So and that is something that I'm sometimes missing in kite surfing um, or windsurfing because you're always, you know, like going back and forth, you know, like full tilt. And, <laughs> and especially when I'm in waves, you know, then, okay, you go, you go upwind. So you try to get back to the, to the lineup, so to say. You drop into a wave. And then on my way out, I sometimes try to sneak in a jump or a trick, right? So you, I'm always like busy. And, yeah. and that led me to, to think about wing falling, you know, the other day, because I feel like in wing falling might be kind of a mix of these two. Like you can, obviously you can go back and forth the whole time, but you could also sit on your board in the lineup a lot more easily than with your kite or your windsurf gear, probably. I don't yeah, know. I never tried it. Yeah. Well, I, I, so far uh, on the Island here, it's pretty new. So nobody else really has the wing foils too much. It's like one or two people that have them. They only use them in the summer. So I'm alone. But mm -hmm. I think what you're saying is right. Like, yeah, you could easily just fly out, go upwind, even on a flat day. You know, you don't need waves or anything and just go in the deep. And you can sit down, mm -hmm. sit on your board, chill with the guys there or whoever's with you or just alone. Well, like kite surfing, you know, you got to have your kite up all the time windsurfing okay you've got to drop your sail and you've got a water start and everything and uh, it's it's not as comfortable sitting on a little windsurf board that is not made to balance like a person alone on it yeah. uh, without any speed you know so i think it is more similar to surfing mm -hmm. uh, in that perspective at least mm -hmm. so yeah yeah i think it kind of mix i think wing foiling in general mixes a lot from all the board sports that we do all the water sports you know windsurfing kite surfing surfing Uh, I think it has a nice mix of everything and that's what's making it popular at the moment. Mm -hmm. Everybody finds something in it. Yeah. So what made you be curious about it? Because and I, I mean, I don't want to generalize, but if I had to say, you know, like, or try to try to figure out what windsurfers are about, they are not about kite surfing. <laughs> <laughs> they are usually not, too much about other water sports in general you know like i mean i'm a windsurfer but i'm kind of windsurfer out of service you know like i, yeah. I still do it pick it up time by time but so what, what made you interested in wing falling well uh, first let me like say i know what you mean like windsurfers kind of stick to windsurfing mm -hmm. but i don't think the reason for that is so much um the like hate for other sports or just like thinking their sport is better i mean we all think our main sport is the best of course but i don't think that's the main reason they kind of stay away from other sports i think it's because anybody that's sat and learned windsurfing and experienced it it took so long and so much hard work because windsurfing is much more mm -hmm. technical and up there when it comes to learning it yeah uh, that i think it um you know, you're kind of afraid to go into another sport, mainly because you think it might take just as long. Also because you think I haven't even gotten to the level I want to be in windsurfing. How can I start mm -hmm. another sport? I mean, I'm lucky on the side that I have a lot of hours and a lot of opportunity to be on the water. Uh, if I, you know, open up my schedule for it. So then, you know, not everybody can do that, mm -hmm. but I think that's the reason a lot of windsurfers kind of stay away from the other sports mm -hmm. uh but but to answer your question like what attracted me was that uh i'm quite spoiled when it comes to wind i'm not gonna lie you know i want mm -hmm. i want my 20 knots i want nice uh, steady wind because that's what we have here so mm -hmm. for me it's like what it's only 16 knots uh, 18 knots whatever and i got a pump uh, oh and it's a little bit cold or and it's gusty i'm always like fine you know people here tend to find excuses and mm -hmm. until you start going to other places you don't realize how lucky you are mm -hmm. for the the conditions we have here mm -hmm. uh, so i've traveled kind of i know how lucky i am and i try to get out as much as possible but i wanted to get out in the light days you know sometimes you look at the sea and it's like light wind but the sea is so like perfect conditions and the wind is super steady but i just really don't like and i've tried it i really don't like things like slalom or light wind windsurfing or you know race style or all this i just do freestyle and i do wave and that's about it so for mm -hmm. me if i couldn't go out on my wave or freestyle gear i was not pushed i was not pushing myself to kind of go so i was looking for something for the light wind and to be honest like i said to you before mm -hmm. uh, another time was a um, 
I don't actually like foiling. Like I tried windsurf foiling. I don't mm -hmm. like it. I've said this in my video in uh, on YouTube, mm -hmm. the one uh, where you saw me first. So I don't like uh, wind, windsurf foiling. I don't like kitesurf foiling. I don't even like looking at that. I mean, I think they just get it in the way. I mean, I think that should be banned in general, but that's my own opinion. Um, <laughs> but so I'm not... Yeah, don't get foiler. me in trouble, man. Don't get me in trouble. <laughs> I already had a couple of guys, you know, like showing up in the podcast and then... The funny thing is, like, I, I, I'm fine with someone telling his opinion, but then sometimes people are asking me, like, how could you say that in your podcast? And I was like, it was not me that, I, yeah, that said that. You know? said it. It I was take, my guess. I take full responsibility. <laughs> I take full responsibility. Uh, anybody that wants to tell me off can find me, okay? Leave Daniel alone. Um, but yeah, like, I'm not a big foiler. I'm not a big fan of it. I never been since it came out. So I was always like, eh, foiling, you know, that is the best thing to do but uh -huh. I didn't feel like it. And then I saw wing foiling and I was like, you know what? That actually looks kind of cool. Uh -huh. And that was be before they even started doing this crazy stuff they're doing now, like loops and stuff, you know, but I was mm -hmm. looking at it and I was thinking that looks like, like you said before, it kind of looks like surfing. Mm -hmm. um, so you don't need that constant pressure on the rail. You don't need to be like in, uh, and, that, and that's how it is. You know, once you get up, you kind of just flow, you go and it gives you the opportunity to do whatever you like. Uh, so I gave it a try. Uh, although I'm not a big foiler and yeah, I liked it. I really, I really enjoyed it. And mm -hmm. I saw that, yeah, I can, now I can take advantage of much lighter winds and those days where it looks perfect, but you need like five knots more, you know, for yeah. windsurf. So now I can be in the water and have fun. And then if the wind comes, I can come out and change. No problem. Yeah. So I think that's what kind of first brought me to it. It was just the accessibility, the, the fact that it opens up uh, so much more time on the water. Yeah. But It was something different, uh, but at the same time, something familiar, you know? Yeah. So I think that's what I liked about it. You know, that, that's, a, that's crazy to put, or it's hard to put into words, like why is wing foiling different than other foil sports? So yeah. <laughs> I, I, I also can't really tell because I had the same experience as you had. So I started kite foiling. I was uh, spending my winter in Tarifa and... Uh, tarifa you have these crazy days like 20 plus knots maybe sometimes 30 plus knots and good waves in winter also you can surf you can kite surf you can wind surf you can do everything you want you can sub but you still have these days you know like sunny and it's like 12 knots yeah and what, what do you want to do it's too mushy to go surfing you know like and i and i've stumbled over kite falling and i said okay i just try it and i and i did it and I, i progressed but it always felt for me it was like okay it's like taking a walk on this on the ocean it's like not going for a run it's like you know like yeah just it's taking really, a walk it's really zen just flowing yeah everywhere. and like after one and a half hours i always always get bored and i would go out you know and, <laughs> and it was good because I, i was satisfied because i felt that it's better than sitting on the beach <laughs> and, but but I, i had never really like got the hang of it and some of my friends they were super into kite falling you know and they they would even go kite foil if it would be enough wind to go uh kite surfing or windsurfing and i was never that kind of guy you know as soon as i could go get her on my 11 meter kite or my 10 meter kite i would be out there with my kite i should put a little side note here like before yeah. when i said my kind of dislike for uh -huh. kite foiling yeah it's actually more what you just said like i understand when it's light wind and they're out with the big foil kites and a kite and it's nothing else you can do and that's putting them out of the water and i'm like yeah go for it you know that's getting you out on the water that's perfect yeah. but then there's a lot of kiters that have kind of evolved into these foilers that just go out with any kind of wind like uh, last winter i was in vietnam Yeah. And for anyone that knows the wind there, the average wind is like 30 to 35 knots. Yeah. And they were foiling. And I'm like, yeah. why are you kite foiling in 35 knots? You know? And it's just kind of, they love the foil and they do it. But for me, that's why I dislike them. They kind of get in the way even more than kite surfing normally gets in the way when it's a crowded place. And you're doing it when you really don't need to do it. Like for mm. me, foiling is for the light winds and it's for the mm -hmm. getting, getting time on the water when you normally wouldn't, you know? Yeah. Uh, so no hate against light wing yeah. kite foilers. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, maybe maybe just 
my two cents is like everybody on like all the water sports like if you go out there and you want to have fun like super cool and i you know I, who am i to tell someone not to go kite falling in certain conditions i think this where we all probably can can make the world better is giving the other people their space like and and this comes down to me like I think that's a quote from Spider-Man or something like that, you know, like, uh, <laughs> like if you, it's, it's true. It's true. I don't like, know where you got it from. <laughs> like if you have a, oh, what's a quote in English? Ah, shit. I, I can't remember it. Like um, if you have like power, you need, it's, it's your responsibility to take care of uh, your power. Yeah, yeah. With, something with like a, that. With great power comes great responsibility. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So like when I'm on the wave kite setup, so I have this engine in my hands, you know, that can pull me in any wave. And I see surfers in offshore wind in the lineup. I know their struggle, like paddling out there in these conditions, you know, like catching a wave. So I just treat them as if I would be stronger, so to say, you know, like not like looking down on them, but like yeah. letting them have fun, you know? So this, and the same is then in the lineup, like when you're on a sub, gives the short borders a wave here and there, you know? <laughs> like, and, and when you are on a cat foil, it's so easy for you to go upwind, so to say, you know, like if you see someone struggling going upwind, like just give them priority. Let it yeah. be, yeah, yeah like give them priority. Yeah, but and, and... I think this, um, because I had this discussion many times when I talked to people about, you know, they did something wrong on the water or the other guy had priority or whatever. And I see that the main problem actually tends to be the a non-understanding for the other sport yeah so when you are a pure kite surfer nothing else and you you see a windsurfer and they don't give him priority when he's like not planing and trying you know when you're not planing on a windsurf and you haven't got the wind to get planing you're kind of a sitting duck you can't do anything so if even if you're like blocking someone's wave or you're in their way and you should open up space for them you can't mm -hmm. so the other person should understand like okay he can't do anything i should get out of the way But, you know, you get some people that, uh, and I'm not talking only that kite surfers do this. Obviously, wind surfers do it as well. Wind surfers think like, oh, yeah, the wind surfer behind me will understand that I'm going for a jibe, even though I haven't looked behind me, you know. <laughs> no, but the kite surfer won't understand you're going for a jibe. So it's you got to kind mm -hmm. of understand that there's other people, other sports, and they might not know, or you try to kind of stay more open-minded. This is yep. the, the main thing. But it's hard to do that. When, like you say, you, you surf, you kite surf, you windsurf, you kind of know the sports. Mm -hmm. When you are a single, when you do a single sport, I think it's mm -hmm. hard to show that understanding, you know? Yeah. Yes. I think it's, it's sometimes you can get a, a, a certain degree of understanding just by watching other sports and other disciplines, you know, like sitting on the beach, having your beer and just yeah. watching them. So that, that also helps. But yeah, I totally agree. You have to be, you know, you have to be, um on the inside with your surfboard like paddling for your life to understand what it means to be like closed out you know yeah, like, yeah. you can as, as a kite surfer you can't imagine that situation because you pull on your kite you jump over the wave you're out and it's like yeah exactly and yeah exactly anyways so i, I maybe someone is catching <laughs> catching up on that and drinking his beer and, and and maybe also like watching other disciplines that would really help but coming back like to your wingfall experience yeah so you you were intrigued to do it because there's something to do when you're not have the perfect windsurf conditions so to say yeah i was looking and, for something for the the not good conditions the light wind yeah. and this was the only thing that kind of piqued my attention i was like yeah. oh yeah i want to give that a go yeah and then to just to add on that like what separates like wing falling from other falling disciplines at least for me is that on the wing fall board i have I think it comes down because you don't have this heel pressure all the time. Exactly. So yeah. you, you are kind of on the board, like you would be on a surfboard. And when you do turns it, for me, it really feels like doing turns because with a kite foil, it doesn't feel for me like doing turns. It feels like, I don't know, uh, steering the kites pulling you around. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Something like that. You know, it's like, like steering a R RC car or I don't know. It just like, <laughs> it doesn't feel like on my surfboard or my windsurf board. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, I agree. I completely agree. I think that you're much more connected to the actual foil. Yes. So you are like, you're flowing on the water. You yeah. don't need that heel pressure. That was a big difference for me. When I when I first tried the windsurf foiling, 
yeah, sure, I got up and I did it and, and I was going. Um, obviously, there's much more to learn for me in that if I ever continue, but I didn't enjoy it, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I didn't enjoy it. I was like, uh, okay, yeah, this is a nice now in the beginning yeah. where uh, it's like a first experience. But after an hour, I was like, okay, yeah, actually... Uh, this is not really fun. Like you have to constantly keep pressure. You have to always be on your heels. You have to like always be careful. It's kind of like windsurfing in full power, like race style, but without the full power, which is what you usually like yeah. in windsurfing. So I think in foiling that flow and that kind of just connection to the foil, like I said, and that you can, yeah, like sometimes I'm just going straight on a foil. And if I have enough speed or uh, a little wave or something, I can leave the the wing and just yeah. you know and there's not really a wave to ride on but i can just do this yeah easily carve and, a little bit, yeah. and carve it and just yeah. get the feeling and and that's what i like about it you can play yeah. around so much yeah and that was that was kind of an aha moment for one of my friends when i was on a wing foil setup the other week and um, we had really good conditions for windsurfing actually like 25 knots something like that mm -hmm. and i was still on my wing foil and everybody was like dude why are you wing falling today and i was like you know there's some wind swell out there which we very rarely have and i can i can ride the waves with my foil you know that's super yeah. fun and i can't do nothing with these waves on my on my windsurf board i mean i can try to bump and jump and that's about it yeah and, but it's basically straight lines on the windsurf yeah and then and then they were like yeah but why are you not on a windsurf foil you know like you could also do it on a windsurf and i was like yeah but then i always have the sail in the way and i can just And that's, I, I was in a wind wave, you know, like a tiny one. And I felt the wave like, a prog like, like, yeah, accelerating me. Like I would feel on a, on a decent yeah. ocean swell. And, and the wing was just pulling me in the wave and pulling me out of the wave. But, but on the wave, I was just on the foil. And that, that was super, super fun. Uh, yeah, I think yeah, that's, that's, that's something that's, that you I don't get. That, yeah anywhere I else think that's that's the nice thing about it is it takes the little things like like you said like little swell that normally wouldn't affect your kite surf your wind surf or anything and it feels like you're on a two three meter swell you know being pushed and you feel the force you feel everything i think that's the the real magic about it you know yeah because of that connection with the foil Yeah. You get to feel everything much better. And like you said, the, the kite or the or the sail is not in the way. So you can just cut and do whatever you like, basically. You're basically free on, yeah. on the board. Uh, yeah, I think that's the main reason uh, it's attracting a lot of people now also. Mm -hmm. Super stoked about it. Uh, well, we will see <laughs> um, <laughs> if other people also get stoked about it. So maybe let let's dive into your first experience because um, what I really want to I, I really want to shout out your video on it because how I came across your and your platform and your YouTube channel basically because everyone else in the podcast I either knew personally or I had some kind of relation with already from from Instagram or something like that and then I I saw a video of you um, face planting into your wing. <laughs> and, and I saw that that's a hilarious video to put on on Instagram, and and then the caption something said like, uh, "Check out my new video, my first wing fall experience," and there's plenty of more of this like <laughs> on. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's important to show the the truth. You know, I mean, yeah. even I'm sure even these pro riders when they were starting, they face planted one or two times for sure because especially they push the limit. So, but most people on social media, especially they show like, oh yeah, look, I'm doing this backflip already on a wing foil. It's like, yeah, but this kind of, for me, puts people off because they think mm -hmm. like, gosh, like my God, how am I going to do that? You know, I can't do that. Mm -hmm. But if you show that, you know, normal people do it and yeah, you crash and yeah, I am someone also that I crash and I'm someone that is experienced with water sports. Mm -hmm. So I think that shows that uh, everybody should do it and everybody should crash. Don't expect to get mm -hmm. on and just fly you know it's not uh, it's not it's it's not hard i mean we'll come into this later but it's not easy either you know so i think showing some reality the, is very good for everyone mm -hmm. involved <laughs> yeah so i really loved your approach um and i thought this guy is hilarious i need to interview him on the podcast <laughs> <laughs> so, so, thanks for coming up um yeah so we we were thinking like that we structured our talk a little bit 
Um, yeah. And the first thing that we want to talk about is like what equipment um, to to check out wing falling, and um, how can you start? So so what did you do, and and what is what are your learnings from your first experience? Because you didn't do too much research, right? You just no, uh, really for the first times I went out, and I, I like to do this for multiple reasons, like because I like to get. So I, what I mean is I like to not go in uh, by doing you know 10 hours of research on YouTube and then take the equipment mm -hmm. and try mm -hmm. something for the first time. I like to just go and try it with the very basic knowledge, mainly to get kind of my own feel for it. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes, you know, people do give good tips, but sometimes those tips are too advanced uh, mm -hmm. or other people give tips, uh, but they don't focus on, uh, and I'm not saying they're wrong. I'm just saying like they don't focus on, Uh, for example, okay, yeah, my board is very specific to this and mm -hmm. someone else might be using another board. So I shouldn't give this tip because it might confuse someone. They just give tips and because that's what they want to do. They want to help. They want to give as many tips as they can. So I like to take my own experience first. And then when I have a difficulty somewhere, like find my own difficulties. And when I have a difficulty, I'll go and I'll like, okay, uh, yeah, this is my my problem so what where who is talking about this problem and i go and mm -hmm. find a solution to it uh, mm -hmm. and also because i think it's kind of fun you know to yeah. to not know everything before you go in and, and less frustrating that you're like oh they told me to do this and i can't do it yeah sometimes you can't do it because it's your first goal obviously mm -hmm. you know uh, mm -hmm. so i think that's why <laughs> i didn't research it i think some people should do more research than i did to go in obviously <laughs> um but talking about equipment like you asked I I didn't have the best opportunity to kind of choose because I didn't order my own equipment. Yeah. I just borrowed them from somewhere here on the island that someone had uh -huh. a, a set and I took it. Uh, and it's a RD, like you'll see on my Instagram, it's an RD 122 liter board and, mm -hmm. and a five meter wing. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, if you want my advice on what to use for your fir the first time, I think the big board is perfect. Right, like mm -hmm. a big board is good. It's easy. It will help out. If you have water sports experience, or if you're like a windsurfer, a kite surfer, a surfer, whatever, I think like me, you can go directly onto the foil board. So this 122 liter. Mm -hmm. But uh, a, a tip, uh, advice I saw uh, before I even went on was everybody was saying go on a sub first. Mm -hmm. And I think for someone that has very little or no water sports experience, I think this is a would be a good step. Mm -hmm. And I go on a sub first, mainly because these uh, foil boards, although they're big and the floaty and 120, well, like 120 liters, is quite big, mm -hmm. they're compact. So they don't mm -hmm. feel that stable. It's not like you would stand on a sub board. Yeah. So the big board, I think it's a good thing. Yeah, for sure. Um, the wing, it really depends on maybe, the way. Maybe let me yeah. add something to the board because um, I also heard that a lot that you should go first on a sub. I don't totally agree with it because it totally depends on your sub. Um, because I tried it actually because my wing arrived here before my board arrived. So I was like, <laughs> I have to try it. And I borrowed a sub. I borrowed multiple subs actually, like inflatable. And because I don't have these big SUPs, I, actually, I don't own them. So I had a big inflatable, a big hard board uh, a sub. And it was more unstable than on, on the wing foil board um, in my next session. Because I, yeah, I, yeah, I, guess... I think because of the foil, the foil is kind of, you know, like, pretending or uh, preventing you from from kipping yeah, it's much. like a huge huge fin basically yeah um but And yeah i, I guess go, you're right i couldn't go upwind on a sub i could immediately go upwind on, on the foil board just just planing you know so just yeah, just much yeah. sense well like i said i haven't tried this up but i'm thinking like in general a bigger board so for example maybe if i was on uh, my windsurf station right yeah. when i first tried it yeah uh, like let's say it's summer and i'm teaching someone how to wing foil Yeah. I would maybe even just put them on the big, big uh, windsurf beginner boards. Yeah. But they have a center board and they have another fin and they're like 200 liters. Yeah. You just want something big and floaty yes. to kind of get the feeling on the water. Of course, if you have, I think personally, because I didn't find it that hard, I think if you have any sort of balance, mm -hmm. you can just go straight on a foil board mm -hmm. uh, as long as your conditions are not too rough. Right. Yeah. I think uh, the sub is kind of for people that really don't, have any experience have bad balance or mm -hmm. are just feeling unsafe uh, yeah. but again like you said i think you are right uh, a sub should be a stable floaty sub not mm -hmm. uh not any like maybe bad design or just race style sub or just something you randomly find make sure it is something big and floaty 
yeah and easy to stand on that's the point yeah. being easy to stand on yeah <laughs> um yeah but i think the board i like a big board is good but i did find yeah. also uh, i forgot to mention before that already like on you know your your third fourth session for me i found that it uh, i already want a smaller board mm -hmm. like while i'm writing i feel like oh i'd, I'd like a smaller board mm -hmm. um so i think if you're kind of buying for yourself maybe like something you want to keep mm -hmm. you probably don't want to go for the biggest you can find immediately maybe just make it harder on yourself in the beginning mm -hmm. and have something that you might want to use later on you know yeah. it really depends on the situation of every person i think the best is if you can find somewhere to borrow or rent or yeah um, because i think you you want to drop down on the liters quite yeah. fast it's quite a fast progression yeah Don't, my advice would be don't drop down too, too much because I, I'm still on my 105 liter boards. I'm 78 kilos, something like that. So yeah. I, 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 I still enjoy the 100 liter category, so to say, maybe even a little bit more like 105, 110. Um, it also depends on the shape, like because I know the pocket rockets that you're riding and that the one feels a little bit bulkier um, as a beluga, yeah, for instance. Yeah uh yeah but yeah. but so so don't drop down too much because i have a friend who, who went straight on an 80 liter board and that's too little his progression made in like three yeah, months but... is a progression <laughs> i had in three days <laughs> yeah i think uh, when i say drop down i mean like from 120 to like 100 or like 110 something like yeah. that maybe yeah. maybe just even a. I don't mind the volume that much because volume is always good but maybe a, a sharper shape you mm -hmm. know Mm -hmm. something a little bit more compact or i think yeah. that's the bigger difference so yeah it does depend a lot on the board so for sure if someone is trying to go for the first time just get some advice from someone that knows mm -hmm. uh, even better if it's someone you know is not trying to just sell you something and uh, they actually want to help you yeah. and uh, but if i think the best opportunity is if you find somewhere that rents them or you can you know kind of test out yeah to just go and go yeah. down and then then buy yourself something you you find comfortable yeah yeah but i think uh, a big board to start for sure is good and i think also you know it's not a bad thing to have a big board for the really light winds mm -hmm. as i think for like quite flat conditions and really light winds a big board can help uh, as well if you're not mm -hmm. obviously don't look at someone like uh, you know this uh, pros now like oh bals muller It's like crazy guy that, that yeah. goes out on a 58 liter or something in uh, yeah. seven knots. Okay. This is, this is different category completely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're talking about normal people, you know? Exactly. Uh, so, so I think uh, a big board is a good thing to have, but mm -hmm. I did find that I want to progress quite fast. Yeah. Uh, so got it. Borrowing, renting, probably yeah. the best. Uh, also, what else? Uh, for the wing, yeah, it depends on the wind, I guess. Mm -hmm. But my advice for the wing that I kind of understood again on the third, fourth or fifth session is like, I wouldn't want a bigger wing than my five. Mm -hmm. Like even, in, even when the wind is a bit too light, I'd rather pump a lot mm -hmm. than have a bigger wing because already the five is kind of on my limit of what feels comfortable to kind of hold it without mm -hmm. it being so huge that it touches the water and gets mm -hmm. in the way. Yeah. So I think, uh, you know, a lot of people might be like, oh, I want to I want to ride in like six, seven, up to 10 knots only. So I'll get a six or seven meter wing. Yeah. Yeah. You could do that, but I think a smaller wing is much more comfortable to actually be able to pump, uh, pump yeah. with. And once you get yourself up, you don't need a bigger one mm -hmm. than a five. So I would I would recommend like don't go. Basically, my main advice on the on the actual wing is don't go too big, don't go mm -hmm. too crazy, mm -hmm. uh, unless you're willing to buy the whole line. You know, seven, yeah. six, five, four. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, don't go too crazy on the wing. Uh, I think it's more important to learn how to control it and pump it than to actually just have pure power in the wing. Mm -hmm. And but the biggest problem. Uh, I would say for me, they're not really a problem, but the biggest um, disadvantage I had, I think the actual foil I'm using is not that big. Mm -hmm. And like I said, I don't know much about foiling. So when I asked around also, and then I researched after the first two goals, because uh, my first two sessions were pretty hard. I can talk about that in a minute if you want, because they were uh, because of the conditions mostly. Mm -hmm. But 
I found out my wing is like the front wing of my foil is yeah. like 1,582. Yeah. And although it's, it, it still feels quite easy, it's quite a good one now that I got used to it. Uh, I'm not dissing the fin or anything, but I think a bigger front wing would help much more for the yeah. conditions that I want it in to yeah. like light wind and getting up uh, faster. But that's what they gave me. That's what I had. And that's what I used. So it's really, you know, I didn't have much choice there, uh, but I think, uh, and after a little bit of research, the best size is around the 2000 mm -hmm. uh, front wing or even bigger if you want it for lighter winds or just for like, yeah, for like really light winds. But I think the 2000 is something that can go in light winds and you can also progress a lot on and you keep it for kind of always. You won't be like, oh, now I want a smaller wing and I have to buy a smaller foil wing. I think a 2000 would be something perfect, but 2500 is probably the best to maybe start on for the first time. Basically, yeah. the bigger the wing, the easier you'd get up, I guess. And the it might even help when we're talking, going back to talking about having a smaller board. Mm -hmm. I think it kind of compensates for having a smaller board if you do start with one. Uh, but again, I'm no pro in this. So definitely anybody that's going for the first time to try research <laughs> into yeah. it, if you're looking to actually buy your own, you know, and you don't have the opportunity to just test a lot of things. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I think around 2000 is, yeah. is good. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I know the Roberto Ricci for that you're writing because I also own one and mm -hmm. it, it, it's like 1500 something, but it yeah. feels like, I would say it's comparable to a 1800 wing. I don't yeah. know why it's because of the shape. So it feels still quite easy, but I didn't learn on it. And I, you are, I mean, you are really good that you learned wing falling on that one. <laughs> <laughs> For me, it was too much. <laughs> well, like I said, when you take away a person's uh, options, they just yeah. go with what they have. So yeah. <laughs> uh, that's about it. But uh, yeah, I mean, I think it's a good foil in the fact that, like you said, it feels bigger mm -hmm. than it is. But uh, if you are going to choose something and you have the opportunity, mm -hmm. definitely just go for a bigger front wing on yeah. your foil. This will make it much, much easier and much better for light wind, obviously. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. But, uh, and, but like I said, I mean, the main difficulty for me wasn't even the foil, I would say. When it comes to actually riding, it was the conditions I had on my first uh, one or two attempts. And that was because, you know, like you said, you had the equipment there. So you were just like, okay, let's get out on the water. Yeah, <laughs> yeah let's talk about that. So, I mean, the, we know something about your equipment. We know something about what you, what would probably have made your, light, uh, your life easier. Yeah. So let's talk about your first, your first session, like uh, getting on the board, getting on, getting planing, getting foiling, like yeah, how did okay. it go? Well, like I said, I, I found it quite easy. I think if you have board sports experience, especially mm -hmm. water sports, it helps a lot to kind of get the feeling of the board and be able to stand up and not feel like, you know, because the, the main problem for people with no experience in water sports is they stand up and they're like, Oh my God, this is wobbly. Mm -hmm. But for you that, you know, how to, for someone that knows how to windsurf, kitesurf or whatever you stand up and you're like, yeah, it's supposed to be wobbly. Like it'll, mm -hmm. it'll straighten out. So you're much more relaxed during your first go. So I found it quite easy to get up. Obviously I look, I took some advice from people and from YouTube, like, okay, get up on your knees first. Mm -hmm. Um, And then I got the wing in the air and I took power. And the moment you hold the power in the wing, I think everything kind of stabilizes and you feel much mm -hmm. safer to take that step and get yourself up on the board. Um, and of course, any board experience will tell you that keep your body weight over the center of the board. Yep. Right? Because I, I, did, I did give it to someone else to try and they were like uh, getting up and they were completely hanging back on the first step up because they thought like, Oh, the wind is going to pull me forward or something. Uh, so, you know, you've got to understand that your weight has to stay over the board. You're not, yes. it's not windsurfing or kitesurfing that you're connected to something uh, it's, and it's mm -hmm. not that much power. Um, so yeah, I got up, it was quite easy. Um, experience helps a lot with from, from water sports, obviously. Uh, but what I realized on the first sessions was that I needed much more wind than I thought I would need. Mm -hmm. But like I said, I have no experience in this. I haven't researched it and uh, I'm not a foiler. So I thought, yeah, 10 knots pff, will be plenty. You know, all these guys mm -hmm. are flying with 10 knots. Obviously, mm -hmm. it's not true for your first time. <laughs> yeah. So I took the wing foil out and it was, it was a combination of really not enough wind. Like I had around 10 knots mm -hmm. and gusty wind. 
but it was also in a wave spot where we normally do like wave sailing, but the wind wasn't enough. So the waves were still there. This is the spot you see on the video. Mm -hmm. That's where I'm first riding. And as you can see, when I take like an image of someone filming from the beach, you can see that there is um, quite a lot of waves, especially yeah. shore break. Yeah. So obviously that doesn't help with standing up, feeling comfortable and all that, uh, and even getting up on the foil. But the problem was I didn't have enough wind. Like I had 10 knots and I was like, Shh. yeah, I was thinking, shit, I thought this would be much more easy to get up. And I was yeah. doing, uh, you know, because uh, I have done windsurf foiling and I, from my first experience with that, although it's not much, I realized you have to kind of pump the foil out. Yeah. So I was even trying that and I was trying a bit of everything, you know, obviously not very well, but I was trying it and it was just not getting up. And I was like, oh, I thought this would need, you know, less wind. And I, I, at the end, the wind came up a little bit. Mm -hmm. and um, some gusts were coming in and it was like hitting 50 knots and that's when on my video again you see me getting up like when it mm -hmm. hit the 50 knot mark of course i think that now when i was riding uh, like the third fourth fifth time uh, in another spot and it was like pump and jump but very calm because there's not much wind and it was uh, 50 knots maybe not even i was getting up much much easier like after a little bit of experience yeah. but on the first session i was definitely go with some decent wind you know yeah. make it easy on yourself because i lost so much energy just pumping 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 trying to get up and i just lost all my energy and after like three rides i came out and i was dying on the beach and i was thinking this is not working and i'm so tired already i've been out for like half an hour you know oh my god uh, but at the end it came and i did it uh, and i realized what i'm telling you now make sure you have some decent wind. I would say at, if you have like a five meter wing like me, at least 15 knots. Yeah. Like I think you need at least that. Later on, you can ride in less, obviously. Mm -hmm. But for the beginning, at least some decent uh, wind. Um, and what were some breakthroughs that you had? Like, you know, like let, maybe when you, when you get up, um, did you have the problem that you get the wing tip in the water, for instance? Yes, for sure. Uh, and I actually, again, I mentioned this on the my video because on my videos, of course, on my channel, I'm talking more to windsurfers. Yeah. And I think windsurfers have a big problem with this or will mm -hmm. have a big problem with this, especially because you in windsurfing, you always push down on the boom. You kind of create mass foot pressure. So your first instinct when you get up is you grab power and you try to control the board by pushing down the wing. Yeah. But this does not work <laughs> in wing yeah. foiling. All it did was catch the, the wing and it just takes the wing away like flips it away from you and it's down on the water and you have to start all over again. Mm -hmm. uh, so for sure, this was a big problem. Like I kept doing it the first few rides. I kept touching the wing down until I really got used to keeping it up. And this was another difficult thing. Like part of what made me tired uh, was because the wind was light. When I was trying to keep the wing up, you kind of yep. had to use your yes. muscle the whole time instead of yeah. relying on the wind because sometimes there was no wind to keep the wing up so i was like yeah. pushing it up myself and i came out the next day my shoulders were so sore <laughs> so uh i definitely yeah more wind and be careful of catching the wind on the water you yeah. have to keep it higher yeah. yeah um for many people it might kind of come obviously but i think especially wind surfers will have a problem with this yeah um <clears throat> maybe maybe one thing that i learned teaching some guys wing falling yeah. is like the, the middle strut where you normally have the handles or the boom or whatever wing you have yeah it has i i it's a little bit like with kite surfing if you imagine a clock like yeah. in kite surfing you want to have the kite on 12 o'clock um so you never want it like really on on nine or on three o'clock so and and if you imagine the middle strut being a, a pointer on a watch you can imagine like it has to be on one o'clock or 11 o'clock, you know? Yeah. It should not be here when you're still planning. Um, yeah, you, can, I... you can have it like on nine or, or uh, three o'clock when you are already on the foil, but this is like far, far away. So pointing it up to the sky. And then if you, are, if you feel like you have to pull the wing up, you just sheet in with your backhand a little bit. But when you sheet in, make sure you're just sheeting in. You're not like turning it. Yeah. So and 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 that's kind of something you need to figure out. Like while you're still on land, uh, that that's that's that saves you like 
one hour on the water. Definitely, definitely. I think this is a good advice for again anybody starting for the first time. And this is something again I didn't do. Like I really, yeah. I did five <laughs> minutes on land. I was like, oh yeah, yeah, this is this this feels yeah. good. Okay, I <laughs> me know, too, I'm me too. <laughs> yeah, I go in and you go in and you end up being like, I should have practiced this on the beach. You know, <laughs> like I should have practiced this on land. This is this is uh, I could have done this on a much easier place. Uh, but definitely work on the um, on the kite kind of controls mm -hmm. and. Uh, on the beach, obviously, like mm -hmm. for many things. And I think another big problem I had and something that was really tiring and until recently, until I watched the video, I still wasn't sure how to deal with it was when the wing falls on the water yeah, and it's upside down. You're like, uh, yeah. you kind of get stuck there. And if you try to, even if you're kneeling on your board and you try to grab the middle handle, the, yeah. the middle strut and you kind of flip it, it doesn't want to do it. It's too... Yeah it's too stuck on the water and too big in diameter for you to be able to actually flip it with your height on the board. Mm -hmm. uh, and after watching obviously some videos and searching for some advice, that's why I said people should do more research than me before they start, <laughs> at least on the basics. It's uh, you have to like kind of let the wing go and you go to the end, kind of the tip of the wing and you flip it from there yeah. and then it flips much easier. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, don't be, because I'm sure a lot of people must have seen me in the water thinking this guy is drowning or fighting or having <laughs> anger issues with the wing or something because I'm sitting there like, ah, turn around, turn around. And it's not like, it's so hard yeah. to turn it around. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, like I think very basic things like that with the wing control, wing positioning, uh, you know, setting up, getting started, this will save so much time and so much energy if you practice yeah. them first on the beach, yeah, uh, on land, you know, depending where you are. And also, like, um, I mean, this is like really like coming from a place where I want to help, not like sell anything. But if you have the chance to rent something for the first couple of sessions and to get some instructions, doesn't matter if it's at your center or at Feman, because we also had a podcast with the guys from Windsurfing School Feman, and it doesn't matter. But it it really really helps you to save time, energy frustration and also money because you will end up buying better gear for your situation you already progress a little bit you can buy something that you can stick with for two or three or four years if you want and not buying something and then reselling it and, and you know getting something else and stuff like that so i mean yeah that is that is extremely true and i see this you now working on a windsurf station i see this with any kind of sport you see it in windsurfing kite surfing we, now wing foiling everything yeah like take a lesson you know it, it everybody thinks uh, we're always just trying to sell them the lessons just to make money what they realize is actually from the lessons we don't make that much money compared to like renting you know because mm -hmm. renting i have to just give you equipment you go and i don't have to deal with you at all i make uh, the same amount of money without wasting the time because on the lesson i would have to you know pay the teacher you also use the equipment same amount of time and but for you as the customer you will rent and you will progress mm -hmm. much faster because there's someone there telling you look i've made these mistakes don't do this do this yeah. and this is skipping like you know a whole hour of you being in the water alone just yeah. one sentence can can skip a whole hour of torture yeah. let's say yeah. on the water so yeah. it's definitely worth it uh and like you said not selling like anywhere you are i'm not talking about just coming to our station here in Rhodes. and i mean anywhere you are in the world if yeah. you are going to try it and you have the choice between first time taking a lesson or first time just renting on your own and doing it, take a lesson. It'll make yeah. your life easier for sure. And I mean, that's, that's kind of out of scope, but my point of view, I would really like to, to hear your point of view on how to find a good teacher because a good teacher is key here is maybe if you have the chance, like watch them dealing with a bottleneck of their, of their students. Like if a student, you know, like is having a problem, like, as you said, there's some difficulties, And the teacher is able to fix it, like pointing out like, hey, this is your problem. And this is how you can deal with your problem, like in a short amount of time. And this, the student has this kind of breakthrough, you know, like this is a great teacher. This is an outstanding teacher. Yeah. Because most of the teachers say, or some teachers, they just stick with a, with, a, with a book. They go by the book and like, okay, the students are not getting it, you know, because you're, you're giving them the same explanation that probably he or she can't relate to it. <laughs> so... Yeah, um, it's true. And it would be nice to have an easy way to find a good teacher, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, it's extremely hard. 
the one yeah. way, like you said, but I think it takes some knowledge from the viewer side. So not everybody can do this is what you just yeah. said to sit and watch and kind of understand, oh, look, yeah, he's doing the right thing and he's helping out. And, yeah. you know, like in windsurfing, you can see the difference um, when the teacher just sits on the shore and shouts things and yeah. the student is having a big problem, let's say, and getting really tired and the teacher just doesn't do anything. Just said, oh, yeah, he'll float out or he'll eventually do it. Yeah. Or you see the teacher going, ah, yeah. But then you see <laughs> the other teacher, flag. yeah, and you see the other teacher, and the student's having a problem, and he'll actually he's already in the water, and he'll actually go and swim out to the yeah. student or something. Uh, yeah. Obviously, when I say swim out, I'm talking about Greece, not uh, in Germany in the freezing cold. <laughs> Don't expect the teacher to swim out in the freezing cold. <laughs> uh, but yeah, like you see how the teacher reacts, but it's hard for someone to understand this. I think another kind of tell. Uh, and again, I'm not trying to promote my station over others because most stations in my area are family owned and they're like a bit smaller and a bit more um, uh, fam- like friendly stations, let's say mm-hmm. like the difference is a family owned station and a smaller station. Usually uh, if they're bringing teachers, they're going to pay more attention into who they're bringing. Mm-hmm. Uh, like we, for example, we bring specific people. If we, if we uh, train them up and we can bring them another year, we will bring them back. Mm-hmm. Yeah, always like we have a uh, instructor that's been coming f- to us for 13 years already you know and wow. he, this is not his main job this is like his summer hobby job but he's really good the, the customers love him and anytime he wants to come back i would always say yes i would not say oh no you yeah. know i have someone else or something like this yeah um i think uh, small stations and kind of family run stations kind of l- like us and the guys next to us they focus more on who they bring and they make sure that people do their job right so i've had Mm -hmm. teachers where they don't do the job right and they insist on doing it their way and i'm telling them look it's not good you know and i'll tell them once i'll tell them twice i'll tell them three times and if you really really insist on doing it your way and your way is obviously not working like you can Mm -hmm. see all the other teachers the students are flying and your student is not working and this is another red flag when the teacher blames the student Mm -hmm. it's never the student's fault right every student Mm -hmm. learns differently is a teacher's job to uh, develop his teaching style towards the student not the other way around yeah so i think small stations kind of pay much more attention to that and uh, really make sure that teachers do the right thing if they don't do the right thing they will just tell them look you go away you know you either change or sorry yeah uh, whereas i've been to some big stations where the boss maybe hasn't even met some of the instructors you know and mm-hmm. the manager just wants to have the staff there to help out and whatever and it's too big to kind of control everything and to and like customers are numbers you know kind of this kind of uh, Mm. style like uh, i think this also makes a big difference not that you can't find good instructors in stations like those obviously Mm -hmm. it's just that there's a higher chance of them having not good instructors because Mm. no there's not as much checkup on them yeah um but i think the best way is what you said like try Mm. and look at a teacher and see uh, if they're doing the right thing but it's hard for many people to know that and yeah. then it's just a matter of luck. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but but if we if we try to stick with like easy easy signs, I think what you said is perfect like see if if the f- teacher gets frustrated or maybe shouting with the students that's a red flag. You see that a lot in kitesurfing lessons <laughs> like <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I uh, think uh, I think many on this many people can be confused with the shouting like because the way we teach uh, here for example the teachers in the water yeah. And he sends out the student and it's quite windy. So you need to shout. And a lot yeah. of people think it's being a bit aggressive. Not, yeah. not the students, the people looking outside. Yeah. I think the best thing to see when they come, when the student comes back, Yeah. what happens? You know, like yeah. I'm, most of my teachers would be like, yeah, good job, Bob, but let's try and fix this. And they'll have a little explanation and a kind of positive reinforcement. Yes. Not just, okay, yeah, whatever you failed, let's go back and start, try again. You know? Yeah. Uh, I think that's what shows the big, yes. big difference. Yeah, if you yeah. if you if you see students having fun, that's a good sign. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. If the student is enjoying it. Doesn't matter if they're doing well or not, because yeah. everyone learns at a different pace. Yes. Yeah. That's a great. That's great advice. Um. So coming back to your wing for experience, I think we covered already a ton. Um. Now maybe let's talk a little bit about how to get on the foil. Because that's something like, okay, you, you know how to plane, you know how to, you know, keep your balance, how to yeah. not touch the tip with, with uh, on the water. Or so you keep your wing up, you're kind of planing back and forth. Maybe you're even starting to, to try some turns. But little disclaimer from my side, if you're turning and you're planing, it, it's, 
it will never feel like you're 100% sure to, to make the turn. It's always a little bit like sketchy. For me, I'm still, I'm still on the practicing my turns. Unfortunately, I haven't had enough, like as many sessions as I would like. Yeah. Like in the summer here, we have um, everyday wind and uh -huh. it, it kind of grows throughout the day. So like mornings, for example, would be perfect for, and this is what I'm kind of planning to do, would be perfect for wing foiling. But uh -huh. now in the winter, when I have it, the winds are either like crazy storm winds, like 30 plus knots, big waves, stuff like that, mm -hmm. or nothing. Mm -hmm. The light winds are really, really, really rare, like to mm -hmm. have a light wind day. So I, I've had uh, four or five goals on the foil so far. I'm already trying some turns, yeah. Um, but getting up on the foil, I think the most important thing to learn to answer mm -hmm. your question is the pumping, mm -hmm. like the actual rhythm of the pumping. And a lot of people, when I say pumping, they think of only pumping the wing or only pumping the legs. No, it has to be like both together uh, and at a really like smooth kind of sequence you know they kind of it, it, it works together wing although it's not connected it works very much together the wing and the board for getting up um <clears throat> so the pumping obviously is kind of like what i've one thing i've kind of learned is uh in the beginning i was really opening up my arms to kind of pump like this mm -hmm. i find it doesn't do the right kind of pumping i like to keep my sh my elbows uh in a little mm -hmm. bit so that way i have more control over the actual uh wing Yes. <clears throat> so pump with the wing and at the same time you've got to pump with the board and the pumping with the board is kind of like uh like an like a pop, you know, like an ollie, I don't know how you would call it, kind of like mm -hmm. lift the nose and then back down. So you're kind of mm -hmm. doing this the whole time and eventually uh, but but it's not only just doing this, right? You don't push down and push up like this. You push they do this while pushing forwards. Mm -hmm. So that's what I really found helps kind of creating momentum so you're doing this to your board the whole time and, mm -hmm. and then on this part it's when you have the chance to get up now of course i think the harder part and this one really probably didn't look uh, at all um, elegant for when someone was watching me from the beach i'm sure was uh, synchronizing the two at a in a nice pace mm -hmm. uh, because you know like in, i'm used to windsurfing windsurfing your sail is kind of connected to the boards so you have no choice but to synchronize it and yeah um stuff like that but for wing foiling uh it's kind of how to explain it like when the when the internet when the wind is coming in yes i guess so when you bring it closer to you that's the point where your board should have been pointing up uh-huh right so that kind of so like wing in board up wing out board down kind yeah of situation i think i'm saying it right i think i think i'm saying it right yeah, yeah I, i think it's um, because what you said like you want to push it forward so when you pull you generate yeah. speed by by the wing so you pull and you want to exactly want to do something with that speed you want to you want to create exactly, a forward yeah. upward motion because it comes down by by itself because that's just gravity exactly. <laughs> so if you do that and also something i found with the pumping which is kind of strange to me because like I said, I don't have foil experience really. So yes. most of my experience is coming from normal, like board being on the water kind of sports, like windsurfing. Um, when you pump, I think it's don't give up on pumping. It's quite tiring, but don't give up because I found that sometimes I'm pumping and I really feel very little momentum or push or generation of wind, you know, there, but yeah. then suddenly I'm up as long as I don't stop. I'm suddenly up and going. Uh -huh. Like, uh, it, it doesn't need as much wind once you get the hang of it. So, like I said, on the first session, you need more wind than you think. But once you get the hang of it, you realize, like, ah, actually, I don't need that much wind at all. Like, it's, it's mm -hmm. 90% technique mm -hmm. of actually getting up mm -hmm. in light wind. So, it's, uh, yeah, you got to really get good at pumping. And I guess you can practice a little bit on the beach and on the land, at least the wing part. But you're gonna have to practice that in the mm -hmm. water because you need the flow of the water. You need the board moving under you uh, to get the hang of it. And once you can generate that power and get up, but like I said, the power sometimes it feels less than you think you will need. Mm -hmm. And then, but suddenly, as long as you keep going at it, the movement of the board alone will get you up. And yeah. once you're up, that's it. It doesn't need much power to keep going. Yeah. So re really, the hard part is getting up. Like this is what tires yeah. you out. <laughs> yeah i mean and the, the interesting part is what you just said that don't give up on pumping i think that's a mistake that i still do sometimes that i'm waiting for a gust 
And if I can't pump myself out in, in three, four pumps, I, I wait for another gust. Yeah. Um, so th th that's something I, I'm going to try. For yeah, sure. yeah, definitely, definitely don't give up. I mean, I, I found it, I find also that the wing pumping is pretty straightforward. It's pretty simple. Mm -hmm. Like there's mm -hmm. no special, okay, this hand in, this hand out. It's like, as you would hold the wing, just pump it. Uh, mm -hmm. And it goes with your body. So what I found, how I kind of realized this don't stop pumping thing is I start paying much more attention to the feeling I was getting in my legs. And mm -hmm. I was realizing that every pump I was doing, even though I wasn't feeling much wind, every pump I was doing, I was feeling for a split second, a little bit of lift and then a little bit more and then a little bit more. And suddenly I was out of the water and I was, and I was flying. And, you know, with my experience and the feeling I normally have, I wouldn't expect to be getting up with that much power in my hands because mm -hmm. that's what I usually look for as a windsurfer, power in my hands, you know, some sort yeah. of pull. Um, but as long as there's even a little bit of pull, I think a lot of the focus has to go on the feet and uh -huh. getting the board properly and actually focus on what are you feeling? Are you getting up? Because obviously you don't just keep pumping for half an hour and kill yourself if there's uh, no chance of getting up, you know? Yeah. Yeah, and I think just not to overcomplicate it, if someone is watching us, like moving the wing and, and in a pumping motion and then trying to synchronize your legs um, to yeah. move the board, just just give it a try. Don't oversync it. That would be also yeah. my way. Just just figure it out. Like you will, you will f feel like, oh yeah, this makes sense. Just yeah. be open-minded. I feel like a lot of things in wing foiling uh, come very naturally. Like, I, mm -hmm. I think you shouldn't overthink the whole thing. That's why also another reason I don't overtake information before I try it for the first time, because I think mm -hmm. your body, especially if you are uh, someone that involved in board sports and water sports, I think especially then your body kind of knows what it has to do. Yeah. You know, so it, you give it a command and it figures out the rest. But um, yeah, definitely don't overthink it. Just go for it and you will feel mm -hmm. the pump and the smoothness and the flow of the board yeah maybe uh, maybe that leads us because you said like you're you're um focusing more on the feeling in your legs maybe that leads us to foot position on the board mm -hmm. i mean guys I, i i feel like this is something where where i see a lot of mistakes um for my for myself but also from people that i try to teach um like where did you put your feet well what well definitely definitely foot position is important And I think that's what it would help if you had a board with foot straps that yeah. kind of lets you know where your feet has to be yeah. because the foot straps are there, obviously. But the, the one I have, the 122 RD, um, I think it's because it's their biggest version. It's strapless for the wing. Uh, so when you go for wing leaning, it hasn't got an option to put straps in. So it's strapless. And I was playing around with my feet a lot in the beginning. And what I found was... Well, first I had it too far back mm -hmm. because obviously the board has more volume in the back and I had it too far back. Then I found also that although it helped later on uh, after I got better, I found that I had my feet probably too wide apart. You don't actually need such a wide stance. I was kind of thinking mm -hmm. like a, a surf stance, you know, like a wave mm -hmm. stance, but you don't probably need that much later on. I realized just be comfortable, like be comfortable. Um, and, I, and then I started bringing my feet a little bit more forward because I realized I needed that motion for the dipping the board kind of down. And then once you're up on the foil, usually yeah. it wants to lift like this. So you need to keep some weight on the front. Yeah. So one of the first times I got up, I was so far back myself. Like I managed to get up, but I was so far back myself that the whole time I was just leaning onto the front leg to yeah. keep the board straight. So I was like, okay, this is not, not how it's supposed to be. I'm sure I've seen people do it and they look much more comfortable than this. So um it, you have to play around a lot i don't want to give specific i would say feet positions because every board might be different but yep. the, i think the important thing would be your back leg uh, which is involved a lot in the pumping and kind of lifting the sail your back leg has to be over where you've set the foil mm -hmm. right so your foil so the mast position right the mast yeah sorry the yeah. mast uh, of the foil let's say the mast is here this is your board it usually doesn't extend much out of the back there like yeah. your board so your back foot would be Yeah. On, the, on top of the mast. I think that's the mm -hmm. most important. And then the front one kind of works with the length of your board and how much pressure you need on the front to keep it yeah. uh, straight when you're up. Uh, but make sure that you feel comfortable for pumping, like you have control. Because mm -hmm. uh, also when I was too far back in the beginning, 
I was pumping and the board was doing this, you know, like the nose was just not mm -hmm. staying in a straight line. So you want mm -hmm. to have control over that pump that you're doing. Yeah. And once you're up, you want to be able to relax and the board stays straight, not have to put all your weight on the front because yeah. you are way too far back. Yeah. <laughs> Um, maybe maybe one thought on because you're totally right like it, it's it's hard to give specifics because every board is different but maybe if you have the your rear foot as kind of a um yeah calibration point so to say over your mast yeah you should be in a regular stance somehow if you're too yeah. far stretched out as you said that's a problem if you're too like hip wide that's too little so find find a position maybe also move a little bit with your back foot to the front maybe that feels on your board better depending on your foil but i think where we can be specific is like on the center line of the board like it's a so the center line for me is like the point when you connect the nose and the tail and yeah definitely definitely i was talking more about yeah, the actual like exactly, on the length yeah, of the board yeah, but on yeah. the center line your back foot has to be completely on the center line i think yeah And your front foot can be uh, like a step or like half a step uh, yeah. to your side yeah. to kind of stop that yeah. um, flying over the other side. But it's definitely not like windsurfing where you step, you know, on the rail of the board yes. to get up. You, you need to be in the center of the board. Yeah. Uh, And your, your pressure, like from my point of view, your pressure should not be on your heels only. You should have this stance where you're basically you're planing your feet and you're You're giving pressure through your heels, but also through your toes, and you're yeah, kind of yeah. controlling it's, the board. It's like we said before; it's a lot like surfing. Like you've yeah. got to you've got to be like flat on the board, and yeah. then when you want to maneuver or when you feel like the wing is over pulling or something, then you kind of lean yeah. either side and get yeah. used, uh, kind of calibrated like that. Don't just expect to sit on one edge and it will fly. It will not. It will just turn like when yeah. you fly up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it's definitely just getting used to it and be, being comfortable. I think that's important. Like be comfortable. Like you said, a regular stance, not uh, nothing crazy. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, so I, I think we get, we get a lot of great advice for, for pumping, getting on the foil. Um, maybe last but not least, uh, turns jibing tacking mm -hmm. maybe during when you're on so what's your experience like what did you learn like maybe planing turns but also like um, when you're flying on the foil yeah well for for uh, like i said i didn't look into it much so what i i saw some videos and i saw the most common kind of turns were the jibe in windsurfing you know like the downwind one and then mm -hmm. the upwind attack uh, and how they were just like flipping the say the wing over the head. So the first thing I did, and this is on my video also, where it was the, completely the first time I ever tried and it came out uh, quite well and I was pleased. But then after that, it didn't, no, not even one more turn. So <laughs> complete beginner's luck. But um, yeah, I just kind of, without flying on the foil, I was just going and I just, you know, like windsurfing, push the sail back, kind of look where I want to go. And then it was turning me upwind, upwind, upwind. And once I reached kind of the maximum I could bring it upwind and was helping with my legs to kind of steer, I would just suddenly, I would just quickly go flip the wing kind of over your head and at the same time just switch the feet. Yeah. And I would say focus on, if you're doing it like that without flying, it's focus on grabbing the wing as fast as possible to get some yeah. power and get some stability back. And you would, like, I would, I, whenever I do it, not on the foil, I'm always pointing. Uh, when I come out of the turn, I'm always pointing too far upwind. So it's going to be a lot of pressure on pushing that board back into the normal direction and kind of make sure your wing catches the wind. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's kind of just, I would for that, I would look at some videos specifically on turning and again, practice on the beach, the turning the wing around because that's mm -hmm. where the important thing is. Obviously, the, I have a 120 liter board. I can turn myself around on that even yeah. without a wing. Yeah, it's a yeah. floaty board, but Uh, if you don't do the wing right, it will just pull you off or you will end up with like the wing completely wrong place or not being able to grab it or whatever. So it's mostly about wing control. Um, mm -hmm. And now I have, I've managed like one or two jibes on, on the, when I'm up on the foil, mm -hmm. but really I'm still working in like working into them. And I think some of my main mistakes Uh, and like, correct me if I'm wrong, because really, like I said, I don't know much about the, the jibe. So when I was going around the first jibe, the, one of the, my main mistakes, I think I was trying to copy windsurfing too much. Mm -hmm. So what I was doing, in, I was, I was kind of pulling in power mm -hmm. to go around. And now the, and the ones I managed to actually pull off, 
I did the exact opposite. I kind of came in with speed, left the backhand completely and start carving the board around and then turn the kite or the wing over your head and focus on grabbing it. No switching the legs, like come out, switch stance mm -hmm. and try, try to keep it going and then switch the legs. Yeah. Uh, but one of my main mistakes I would say was that I was kind of, especially for the wind servers out there, I was coming into the turn, like looking into it. And I was like, just power with the backhand, you know, like mm -hmm. speed up as much as I can around the turn, but it doesn't work because it kind of bent, it carved me around too much. So I ended yeah. up probably, I don't know, I couldn't see it, but probably my one side of my foil was coming out of the water. You know, that's how yeah. much I kind of lent down. So I would say that's a big, big no-no there. Don't pull power like in the middle of the turn, kind yeah. of pick up yeah. speed get your power before and then just focus yeah. again on the legs and on the foil and focus mm -hmm. on carving it around just with the toe pressure. Yeah. Right. And the other thing here was probably it worked. It kind of worked one time, but I would say uh, probably in looking at it uh, now, I would say don't go crazy on the pressure, like mm -hmm. go nice and smooth around where I was again, probably from windsurfing a bit too much pressure on the toe side kind of trying to carve the board as if it's a normal board you know in the water uh, yeah. and trying to use the rail or something you know obviously you don't need to do that so it's uh, kind of take it easy maybe um, relax the knees and kind of don't lean the body in too much you know just yeah. work with uh, with a lot of power in your kite that's uh, uh, that's called the carved jibe not the wing foil jibe yeah so uh, I think I would say that's a, that's kind of my main the main mistakes I made and now they come they're kind of getting there mm -hmm. slowly and of course like I mentioned before don't try uh, on the, at least on your first attempts don't try to switch the legs yeah. while you're diving you know just kind of yeah. come out switch stance yeah. keep keep it going up on the foil and then yeah uh, switch the legs uh, but I find that just, yeah 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 but maybe the two breakthroughs that I had that that would have probably helped is like, especially when you're planing and you want to turn, I did the same thing as you did. Like I, I approached it as a wind, I, as I would approach a windsurfing tag. So yeah. with, or a cat surfing tag, it actually is the same on a wave board. You kind of going upwind, upwind. And then you have this moment where you basically go zero gravity kind of where you yeah. turn the sail or the wing, uh, the kite or the, the sail and you switch your stance. So this is this, This is one moment where you do all that in synchron in, in, synchronized and then you, you go the other direction. In wing foiling, uh, I found that makes my life a lot more complicated. So I am basic rule that I go by is never switch hands and feet at the same time. Definitely. So <laughs> you first, either you go into the tag and you, you switch your wing and then you can switch your stance or the other way around. You switch your stance, you go into the maneuver and then you switch the wing. So the only thing that I basically try to do during the maneuver is switching the wing, not the feet. Yeah. And then a second breakthrough that I had is like, you probably can switch the wing, so change switching the hands basically, a lot earlier than you think. So because in a power jibe, you it's the last third of the power jibe where you where yeah. you shift your sail. But with wing foil, in the first third of the jibe, I can already switch it. And I just go the other direction. It's like it feels it's kind effortless. Of the, the, the radius you have on the wing is much bigger, I think. So yeah. the moment you're kind of pointing even completely down the wind, yeah. you can already grab the, the wing yeah. and come out. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I think you're, complete, like, you're very right. Don't try to do both together. It's yeah. far too complicated. Also, another thing I would say for people kind of going at it for the first time and they want to decide, should I tack or should I jibe? Yeah. Go for the jibe. I think the jibe is mm -hmm. much easier. Um, and for windsurfers, this might seem kind of strange. They're like, well, the jibe is easier than the tack. Yeah, I think in wing foiling, the tack is very technical and very like precise on the timing and the movements. Like I haven't even come close to doing one up on the on the foil. Mm -hmm. So I would say go for a jibe if first. And I think yeah. this is much easier because it's got to flow around it and you kind of you don't rely so much on the power you can relax and kind of focus on the legs and get yourself around, especially if you have a like little swell, yeah. like an ice line or swell, you can use the swell kind of to go yeah. around as well. Like that's one of the first ones I ever kind of got around the whole way. I was doing it down a wave, not a big wave, obviously, but 
Mm -hmm. So I was doing it down a wave and this kind of made basically the water in front of me flat. Mm -hmm. And uh, it also gave some push to my foil. So I didn't need to pump if I was losing too much speed or anything. It kind of just kept me going. Yeah. Uh, got on it. a nice wave. So obviously this depends on the conditions everybody surfs, uh, like yeah. rides in, right? But uh, if you have the opportunity, I think that. And definitely jibe as the first turn. I think it's yeah. much, much easier. Yeah. Yeah, it really helps. And I think something that you did naturally um i had to figure it out uh so that was my my other breakthrough is like trying to keep the wing a little bit more over my head in in turns and not in front of me because it would then be more like a, a parachute like stopping me yeah. so when you have it up it doesn't matter if you're tacking or driving it it helps you to stabilize because it's pulling you up a little it helps you to deal with gusts because The gust is not hitting your wing full power. It's just like going through it. And and you have full control over it to turn it, switch it, whatever you want to do with it. Yeah, yeah. definitely has to be up high and neutralized. Like just take the the random, you know, gusts or power or anything out of the equation completely. Yeah. And that's that's one of the nice things with wing foiling. You can do that. You know, you can kind of yes. go, to, go to neutral and focus yes. on one thing. Yes. Um, so yeah, definitely I... Yeah, that kind of like, I just kind of threw the, the wing around and tried to flip it. And it, that's where it went on its own. Mm -hmm. And then I felt like, okay, yeah, that's that's nice. And again, this is something that people should definitely, definitely practice on the beach, like on mm -hmm. the land, you know, like this, this shouldn't be like me, something you did on the water and you end up saying, oh, I should have done, I should have grabbed that handle and not that handle or something, you know, of that kind of type. You should have already solved this problem on the land and then, try it in the water yeah um yeah but it's it's a, i think it's a lot about just taking it cool on the foil on yeah. the, around the turn but uh, a lot about wing control like just be able to flip it around be able to do it without affecting the rest of your stuff much yeah true true kakos um thank you first of all thank you for all these explanations i think it's super valuable that you're explaining it because you have this you have this experience in water sports But you're still, you have this beginner mind now on wing falling that uh, yeah, I think yeah, really yeah. helps a lot. And so thanks for taking the time to explain it in depth and, and, and in detail. No uh, problem. As long as I can help some people not uh, crash as much, that's uh, my pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> so that would be my next question. Like, is there any wing fall content coming up on your YouTube channel um, soon? Uh, yeah, probably. I have some, like I said, I haven't had the chance to go out much. So mm -hmm. I haven't actually been able to do much content, but I have some videos of like my uh, third and fourth ride, I think, uh, where you can see I'm obviously much more comfortable and I'm, I'm up on the foil most of the time. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I, will eventually, I will slowly be making another. I've got one video for windsurfing uh, I'm making now. And then the next one, I probably make this foiling video. Mm -hmm. Uh, which will be like my you know, second experience and maybe give some more tips. Some of the things we've said here that I've realized later on. Yeah. Um, so definitely one, uh, uh, some videos coming out and then hopefully uh, maybe some more now during the winter, but for sure in the summer mm -hmm. when I have some friends also around, you know, because now I'm kind of alone riding whenever I see wind, I'm just going with my van somewhere and jump in. Uh, but in the summer, there's a lot of people around, so I can get people to film me. I can maybe film other people trying it for the first time, you know, and I will definitely mm -hmm. make some more content uh, for that and show people uh, some more stuff and give any advice I can. Uh, nice. that's, what, that, that's what I do on my YouTube channel, basically, like advice. I don't have much action going on, uh, even in windsurfing. Like, I don't have many action videos or anything. Uh, I might make some, but the main purpose of the channel is education. Let's say, mm -hmm. kind of help people out with any advice they need and give them some tips. And I usually try to do it in a bit of a more all around kind of simple and basic understanding. Like I mm -hmm. don't go, I've seen too many tutorials where people talk about things in complicated words, or, you know, you've got to think that it might be someone that really has no idea about mm -hmm. anything watching it, or maybe he knows how to windsurf, but he hasn't learned all the terminology. So kind of mm -hmm. keeping it as, basic as i can and as simple as i can and as fun as i can mm -hmm. um so yeah definitely would be some more for wing foiling on the mm -hmm. channel uh but i just need to get more time on the water that's the plan yeah. for now, you know? <laughs> <laughs> 
So where can people find you if they want to reach out? Where, where, what's the best way? So first, you have the YouTube channel, obviously, um, yeah. which is called, and we've also put it in the show notes and in the YouTube description. Well, it's it's pretty complicated because it's my name. It's Kiriakos Yakumaros Windsurf Coaching. Uh, but yeah, I've got some, like, it's mostly for windsurfing, as the name says, but yeah. I've now started wing foiling. So there will be some content for that also for anybody interested. And I also, mostly I work out of Instagram for like mm -hmm. advertising or even giving advice. And I post sometimes some of my, many of my posts are uh, tips on moves and stuff. And now recently I've started posting also wing foiling and, mm -hmm. and windsurfing. So it's a mixture there. And you can also, especially in the summer, anybody following me on Instagram can kind of see the summer life that we have down at the windsurf center, you know, and what's going on and how the wind is and people doing stuff and any, anything, anything fun, you know, parties, whatever, hopefully this year, We'll be allowed to do parties and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, yeah, definitely find me on YouTube. Yeah. And also find me on Instagram for sure. Nice. Now we put it in the description and also in the show notes of the podcast. So thanks, man. Um, I, I actually I never traveled to Greece. So if I decide to do so one day, um, let's let's go yeah, for get in touch. Get in touch. I'll help you <laughs> sort everything out. Don't worry. It's a fun fun place to be. My, my island is really fun i think for kind of everyone you know it's nice. uh, it's very family friendly and it kind of offers more than just wind sports it's yeah. kind of one of one of the islands that offers everything you want parties there's parties you want you know to see things around the island like ancient ruins and ballets and stuff there's that you want just to chill on the beach there's that you want windsurfing mm -hmm. kite surfing for sure there's that so it's, there's kind of everything together which nice. I think is really nice for a lot of people that don't want to just go somewhere and only surf or don't want to go somewhere and yeah. only sunbathe, you know? Yeah. Especially if you are with your partner or your family and they Especially. don't surf. That's, that's Most great. of our customers tend to be family people. And I think that's the reason that when they had to choose between places, if yeah. the family, if the wife or anyone, the partner is uh, involved in choosing, they yeah. will choose somewhere where you can do anything. Yeah. yeah. That helps. That helps, and I think that's a, that. In my mind, just <laughs> just something that I figure out. If I go with people that are not surfers, I and I, and I go somewhere where you can surf. I don't consider it a surf trip. I consider <laughs> it a holiday where I might slip in <laughs> a session exactly. here and there. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> If I go with my friends, it's a surf trip. If there is surf, we go to surf. There's no discussion about that. <laughs> yeah. If it's a surf trip, you go and you're surfing. Everything else is extra. Yeah, exactly. That's it. Exactly. Only if it's totally flat and there's no wind at all. And there's not even a chance of it because if there might be a chance, you're yeah. sitting on the beach. <laughs> you're sitting your weight. <laughs> <laughs> no, definitely, cool. Definitely. Okay, man. So have a great day. Um, talk to you soon. Thanks for being on the podcast and on the no YouTube. No problem. You too. Have, a, have fun. Go, get out on the water as much as you can, obviously. And everybody listening, get out on the water. I know that in your countries, it's really cold. Uh, so, okay. Maybe next month. Hopefully. Ah, you, know, you, can, you can still go. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll watch you guys go out in the ice and everything. I've been seeing all this stuff. It's crazy for me. You know? Here it's like five degrees. No, I'm not going in the water. <laughs> That's like the coldest it gets. Take care, so, man. See you soon. Take care. Thank you. Bye. Bye. So really hope you enjoyed this episode. If you are watching us on YouTube, please know that you can also enjoy this as a podcast on your favorite podcast platform. You're going to find all the links in the video description below. And if you are listening to us on your favorite podcast platform already, please know that you can also see us talk and see us move on video if you go to the YouTube channel. So hope you enjoyed it. Please leave us a like, leave us a comment, subscribe if you want to. And if you don't want to miss future podcasts and videos, see you on the water. Go wing it!